why I'm not sure how much interest all of that got in India when those remarks were actually made. But I can tell you it's really important. Why? Because there's a bipartisan consensus around relationships with India in the United States. Now, there seems to be a similar bipartisan consensus after the events of this week in the UK itself. So a transatlantic bipartisan consensus that India is an important strategic uh, partner. Uh, why is it also relevant? Because frankly, ties between Labour and India have not been particularly good in the recent past. Here's a quick summary and a quick analysis of why these remarks are particularly important. Mr. While the ruling Conservative Party in the United Kingdom has been consistently wooing the 1.8 million strong British Indian community and apparently reaping the dividends, the main opposition Labour Party has gotten into one altercation after another with the Indian diaspora. But the current leader of the Labour Party, Keir Starmer, is on a mission to change this. At the 2023 edition of the UK India Week, he called India incredible and powerful, uh, so a country much. whose partnership thank would so be much. key in case the Labour Party comes to power in the next elections. There are lots of issues in the Labour Party where, over the last two years, we have openly taken the decision to change our party, um, to look out uh, to the world in a different way and, and, and to recognise when it comes to India what, a, what an incredible, powerful, important country India is, a modern India going forward um, and to ensure that we have the right relationship as we go forward. But it might take more than speeches to overcome the hostility of recent years, especially under the reign of Jeremy Corbyn. In August of 2019, the Labour Party passed a resolution against the abrogation of JNK's special status and even sought international intervention. It later backtracked. A month later, a violent protest reportedly led by Labour MP Liam Bayan took place outside the Indian High Commission in London. In November of the same year, the co-founder of the Hindu Council UK said that the Labour Party was anti-India and anti-Hindu. In April of 2020, the party announced a review into the impact of COVID on minorities. The team included Sikhs and Muslims, but surprisingly no Hindus. In April this year, following Hindu-Muslim tension in Leicester, all Hindu councillors were deselected from standing for re-election. Keir Starmer appears to have been taking steps to change this anti-agnostic position from condemning Hindu phobia to clearly stating that Kashmir is an issue between India and Pakistan. His latest pronouncements appear more significant in the light of predictions for the general elections which are expected to be held in 2024. The Labour Party may enjoy a landslide victory by winning 470 of the 650 constituencies. The ruling Conservative Party may be limited to 129 seats. With a high-stakes battle ahead, the Labour Party seems to be eyeing the all-important British Indian votes. There are around 1.8 million people of Indian origin in the United Kingdom, making it the largest minority ethnic group in the country. With a sizable majority of UK Indians having historically supported the Labour Party, this number has been falling in recent years. In 2010, around 6 in every 10 British Indians backed Labour as per a survey. Now that has fallen to just 4 in every 10. At the same time, there has been no decline in Pakistani or Bangladeshi diaspora support for Labour. Apart from politics, there are other more important reasons why the Labour Party might be developing a soft spot for India. The United Kingdom has a shortage of over 3 lakh people in its workforce post-Brexit. Meanwhile, in 2020, Indians got the highest number of skilled worker visas in the United Kingdom. With the easing of rules, this can be increased further. The second issue is that Britain is heavily dependent on Beijing, with imports of around 50,000 types of products taking place only from China. Now the UK is already India's seventh largest export destination and this can be stepped up to replace China. The third problem is that London has been seeking to establish independent trade ties outside of the European Union, with bilateral trade growing by over 22% between 2009 and 2021. 
Now, there is potential to boost it further with a free trade agreement.